Hey guys, what's cracking? Welcome back to the custom card review. Uh, with me, Nabs and Toe. As with any other version of custom card review, he's a staple here. Uh, last time, had some pretty interesting ride lines to go over. There was uh, a lot of good ones. One really bad one. Uh, but overall, entertaining time either way. How are we doing today, bud? I've been taken hostage, haha. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool, brother. Uh, send me the ransom note. I will not pay it. Anyway, let's get on to it. Uh, so, Noir but Poet... Josh, yes. you are the one that kidnapped me. I know your joke. <laughs> We're not talking about it. Uh, Noir Poet 97's got some more cards for us. His, For those of you who watched the previous one, as you'll recall, he sent us a lot of his uh, oh, God. cards from last time. So, we're going to continue with that. Uh, except they're different cards and Griffo support, which is really nice. I released a Griffo article recently, so this is pretty uh, par for the course for me. Uh, Inescapable Hunger is a set order calamity card, and it's grade zero. Okay. You play this with a discarded card from hand. Uh, that's very fair since you're not pitching cards for ride lining Griffo. Continues in the order zone. All of your Griffo Gila get power plus 2k. Also, when Griffo Gila would attack, it attacks all circles without a dragon tree marker at once. Uh, so you attack your own rears? Weird. Fascinating. Uh, okay. It's attacking everything that isn't on a marker. Hmm. But auto mm -hmm. and order zone, when your vanguard attack hits, draw a card. Really? Uh, I don't know. I think, uh, you had a... It started off right, but, like, I think you kind of went a bit too hard on this, my guy. Why does this thing draw, <laughs> like, X cards? That's crazy, bro. Uh... Uh, oh, you hit your own dreams? No worry, motherfucker. Just draw back. <laughs> that's wild, bro. That's so wild. <laughs> it, like, mm -hmm. that didn't need to happen. And also, this is just really excessive. It's kind of flavorful, the fact that it's nuking the field with its attack. Like, I get it, but that's still, like, WTF. Uh, the only part yeah. of this skill that I actually do like is, well, other than the cost, which is very reasonable, is the uh, continuous plus 2k giving it the mlb defensive is kind of nice because the whole point of the deck is just reach turn six by any means necessary it's pretty cool i like that it's just that the rest of it yeah like come on you don't wanna you don't wanna make the uh if you persona wrote this turn card so obsolete now my guy right right that would be another thing to consider so lots of issues with this one uh it ain't bussin uh, Dragon Tree Wretch, in insert Cleepoth Tree reference. <laughs> Neat. Uh, so it's a Hydragum Nationless unit. Okay. Uh, power, shield, just what you expect for a grade 2. When placed on the rear, you counterblast and soul blast. You place a Dragon Tree marker, search the deck for Calamity Order, and add it to the hand. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if this, is on a, if this unit is on a rear circle with a Dragon Tree marker, and you have a Hydragum on your VC, it gets 5,000 power and crit plus 1. Oh well, hold on. Why? Why the? Why, why the, the crit? crit plus one, my why guy? Why the crit, bro? Why the crit? <laughs> That's kind of mean, bro. It's very. I mean, big I kind of meanie. big meanie. I guess one thing <laughs> about it is, uh, when you do the whole restand on the kill turn, it's gonna have the crit, and then if you're doing something like Eldo Breath because you are Jesus H Christ himself, <laughs> then it's gonna get double on crit again. Uh, but. Ah, that's a, that's a bit much. Um, it's mean. Yeah, that's so mean. Yeah, this just take out the crit, but everything everything else really good, really good. The five thousand power makes sense, so it's a base of twenty now during your turn. I mean, how it's base fifteen during the opponent's turn as well. That's perfectly fair. It's adding to the defensive aspect, right? And then this is just a searcher that is totally grounded in what we have seen previously in the deck so not only does this feel balanced and costed well it's also very realistic i would totally see this getting added into a deck like as a real life card you know as long as uh as long as they release more you know calamity cards that actually does something <laughs> yeah <other than laughs> instead of switching fire which uh uh yeah this does i think this can search uh, wildfire right wildfire mm, the blitz order yeah yeah is that a calamity i think that's a calamity 
if it's a calamity, you can search it, and that's really nice. I love that card. That's really fucking nice. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, pretty pretty good stuff here. Get rid of the crit, though. Uh, finally, a new mechanic I had in mind. Something I call Armory Blitzes. I'll be damned if this isn't a Brant card. Uh, then again, everything this guy has done so far has been either Brant or Griffo, which by proxy can be Brant. Uh, very on theme for a Link Joker <laughs> guy. Uh, okay, Armory Zone. Contains a set of Blitz Orders in your Armory deck next to your Damage Zone. <laughs> where four of these blitz orders can be played per fight by discarding a corresponding trigger card from your hand. Each armory blitz order played is removed from the game after their use. Uh-oh, but uh, what about the uh, drag assassin matchup? Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I just forgot. I just forgot that you reminded me, fuck. <laughs> once, like, like, suffer. Once four armory blitz orders have been removed, you cannot use them anymore. Oh, okay, so G-Guards. Uh, these exist outside the deck, so they do not affect the number of cards in your main deck. Generics include draw. When played, choose one of your vanguards and gets 10,000 power until end of turn. What the fuck? Should have been battle. Uh, then choose a card from your drop zone or soul and add it to your hand. If you put a card in your hand, you call fuck? a card from your hand to guardian circle. Wow. What the fuck? Crazy, no. bro. What? What, the fuck? what is this? Whoa. That's what the fuck? No! Damn, what the fuck? No! Damn, I think I know how to make MLB good now. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it took uh, it took this spine breaking fucking support to make MLB good. Amazing. Yeah, it took learning the format. Was it worth it? No. Uh, <laughs> critical. When played, if your opponent's attacking unit critical is two or more, reduce that unit's critical to one until the turn. See, this is more rational. Fair. <laughs> this actually feels That's fair. fair for critical. Uh, front. When played, all of your units get 5,000 power and 5,000 shield, and all of your opponent's units gets minus 5,000 in a turn. No. What? Uh, should have just done the 5,000 shield. Uh, maybe the 5,000 power to the rear guards as well. Like, all your rear guards get 5,000 power and shield. Like, okay. Hey. Heal. Heal. Varies depending on the deck slash nation. Uh, you know what? I like that. I That's like that because um, I like that because heal is the most limited one. Yeah, yeah. You have the least amount of copies, so that's fair. Yeah. Plus, I can also see a case where it's sort of like how G guards is, where different G guards for different nations they do different things depending on what deck you're playing. So, uh, one for mm -hmm. Nirvana heal. When played, choose up to one prayer dragon, up to one trick star from your drop, and call them to rear. If you call it one of each, okay. search your deck for up to one unit with the overdress or crossover just ability. Add it to your hand and shuffle your deck. Then perform an overdress or crossover just depending on that unit's ability. Choose a unit from the overdress state and unit in the crossover dress state, and they get your opponent's unit. Units cannot target your vanguards for attacks. What the turn. fuck? No! No! What the fuck is God. this? <laughs> Bro, I do not really, want to be. Like, you do exceed <laughs> summon during the opponent's turn. The exceed say, hey, you can't attack the vanguard. You gotta go through us, buddy. And then because <laughs> these crossover dresses are big as hell, that's an issue. Then you have things like Vils, which also can't be targeted by effects. That's an issue. <laughs> Doesn't Garo, As... Garo base 20, like, already? Yes, it is. It the is. Thing? As a, As a Nirvana player, I do not claim this. <laughs> and you know what? The, the, and, and this is kind of defensive by proxy, because if you do a Garo, all you gotta do is then defend a Garo, and you're, and you're effectively a 20k base, because I can't get at you until you get through these, like, dilly bouncer units. That's bad. Um, okay. That's fucking stupid. What the fuck? Orphist. When played, you. you have an Orphist Vanguard. Your your Vanguard gets 5,000 power for every face of world order. Person. Until when? Until when? If it's when? battle, fine. Uh, if it's battle, that's great. Um, then, if you have four or more face up world orders in your order zone, choose any number of Shadow Army tokens to your rear circle and move them to the Guardian Circle. All of your tokens uh, get 10,000 power, well, 10,000 shield if you're at Abyssal Dark Knight. I mean. That's uh, actually I maybe mean, it's game. I, it's gamer. I like this. <laughs> I actually think this is fine because it's all just like I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt and say until end of battle for this. Then you just basically get this all in push to stop an attack with really, really, really big numbers, right? Like something that mm -hmm. would matter if you're playing against Bastion and maybe Lutissi if they hit OT, you know, stuff like that, right? Like yeah, this sir. this actually feels good because this isn't a permanent thing that screws over the opponent and is hard to counterplay. It actually makes sense. And, and I almost kind of think of like Absalom, you know, where like for that one battle, oh man, he's hard to break. 
Uh, it's cool. <laughs> Uh, and another for draw jeweled. Heal. When played, if you have a draw jeweled, choose three cards in your drop and put them in your soul. Then, you may soul blast four cards with different grades and reduce your opponent's attacking unit's power to one. Uh, okay. That's actually neat. Fair, I guess. In theme, that's defensive fair. for one battle. Cool. Uh, youth Burke, just for you, hello. Just for me? Wow, you shouldn't. Okay, this better be sexy. Uh, okay. When played, if you have a Vanguard with Youth Brick in its card name, choose a card with Revolt Form in its card name from your hand, so drops drop zone, write it as rest. If you rode and it gets at the end of turn, bind this unit face up and choose the Revolt Trust ability. So you, so you write it, and then you go back to the Youth Brick. Uh, uh, wait. Can we feel more? Wait, hold on hold a second. On, I'm trying to think. Gus. Oh, Tempest. Tempest Wait. mid battle. <laughs> Tempest mid battle is one thing. Gust mid battle. Get 10,000 power. <laughs> oh wait, hold on. Does that even work? Because it doesn't tell you to revolt us. It just, uh, it just means. Yeah, that doesn't work because uh, Tempest and Gust needs to be placed by revolt us. Are the revolt us ability specifically, and they get all and they yeah. get their ability? But then, what's yeah. the point of doing this then? If they can't activate. I guess just add the uh, the revolt dress ability there and uh, you're good, I guess. I don't fucking know. Yeah, maybe. This is so weird. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to assume that you can play them, right? That is interesting. Um, With Gust, is a bit busted, but with Tempest, I actually kind of like it. That is neat. Then again, wait, is this the uh, super secret spicy tech that makes Zest potentially worth it? <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna tell you this right now, Josh. If the uh, so considering that this would uh, like an uh, like a blitz order, right? right if right. the opponent attacks uh, youth perk, and you do this, the attack stops because the the unit you're targeting uh, disappears. So that means the attack just stops because uh, there's a new unit on top oh, of it. Oh, that is true, isn't <laughs> it? That's interesting. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> so I guess you kind of just stop the attack no matter what thing because it lost its target. Wow, we do <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh rules, homie. <laughs> mm. Man, okay. I, I don't know about this. I'm it's just so I, confusing. I like it's this, though. Off... <laughs> it's me. <laughs> it, it started off kind of kind of horrible, but like it kind of just devolves into, oh, okay, that's cool, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you know, like I kind of... I don't know I, what to I, say. I, I, I will admit though, like a couple of them, like these two are amazing. This one is weird, but I can appreciate the idea behind it. And I also appreciate you for <laughs> for doing this one for me. Uh, this one is dumb. Bias. So you basically got like a <laughs> two and a half out of four. Um, yeah, I, I'm biased, and I ain't I ain't apologizing. Uh, okay, he's brains on overdrive, so he's got more. Uh, Gravidia, when you oh, play- fuck. If, No! Hey, it's Gravidia! No! 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 Choose up to one meteor card in your order zone and put it in your drop zone. <laughs> Denial, Griffin! Oh, that's so mean. <laughs> big, big, Look on the bright side. Big, big, it's big. not a- It's not on your- by your Vanguard's ability, so you don't, like- <laughs> You don't do, like- But well, you don't soul charge, you don't draw, you don't do anything like that, right? Because you're not placing it. You're just getting rid of it. That's funny, though. That's cool. Um, that's Wait, like hold on. Hold on. Let me check the effect of the this Meteor Shower first. Hold on. I gotta confirm something, bah. I gotta confirm something. Okay, when this card is put into- pro Oh, God! Oh, God! It doesn't care! Oh, God! It doesn't that's care, so baby. mean! It's good, though. It it's cool! <laughs> you could have at least set CB1, you bastard. Mm, Fuck. Mm. No, 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 no. Gravity has CB problems, smile. Uh, Bastion yes, Heal. Uh, don't you dare smile. Oh, God, no. I'm not gonna so, like this, am I? When played, if you have a Bastion, choose a unit on your rear circle and move to Guardian Circle. If the moved card is grade 3, because how not, uh, your Vanguard gets 5,000 power for each of your grade 3 units until end of... Turn. What? Why? If you could not move Why? Apart, choose where your units cannot be hit until end of that battle. Whoa! Yo! Okay, that's no, 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 no. We are moving on. We are not talking mm, about this. Fuck that. Uh, so, Fuck that. Uh, Noir. Common theme here. Don't give them big permanent defenses for the turn. That's too much. Uh, but <laughs> I mean, this PG stipulation of you have no rears. I actually do kind of like it because at least you get. You get to throw yourself a bone if, you know, Bastion heads up against Control, which it hates. Uh, but, yeah. Like, I mean, there's this, so much... This should have been until end of battle. There's... 
Honestly, there's so many other steps you could have taken, you know, if Bastion does get a uh, fight of uh, for the control deck. This isn't one of them, all right? I'm gonna tell you right now, this ain't fucking one of them. Fuck oh, that. There's <laughs> kind of a neat one. Uh, this one kind of unifies the bruises a bit. When played, if you have a Vanguard or right. Bruce in its name, activate Final Rush and Dunder Turn. But if Final Rush was already active, aka Viamence, you Soul Charge 4 and call two cards from Soul to Guardian Circle. Neat. Another way to use your soul. I that's kind of weird, but okay. I like it. I like it well enough. I mean, it feels almost barrowy aside from the uh, final rush stuff, but all right, I, I'll, I'll take I it. Don't, I mean, I don't hate it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Plus, uh, how is she supposed to build up to the draw jeweled wind con? Um, Magnolia. So, when played, if you got a Magnolia, choose one of your vanguards, and it gets continuous. All of your units on Guardian Circle gets five thousand power until end of turn. Then, if you have two or more open rear circle, draw a card for every two open rear circle you have. Don't do this. Um, but what? this is good. Don't do that last part. Yeah, that last part. My guy necessary. needs to. My guy needs to chill with this. No, there's a re uh, people always say, "Oh, how come Overdress doesn't have more uh, defensive cards?" This is why, bitch. This is fucking why. Wait, stop asking. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so I will. I will say though, this first part, excellent. I think that's cool. I like it um, because because mm -hmm. you can intercept with like the back row and do. You just get to do a lot of intercepts because of the Magnolia Elder. So that that feels in theme. So, ooh, Seraph. This should be an interesting one. When played, if you have a Vanguard right. Seraph, choose a card of your opponent's drop zone and a rest card of your opponent's rear circle and imprison them. Ooh, but this means that the attacking rear guard can be swept into them in the imprisonment. Then your vanguard gets mm -hmm. 5,000 power for every three cards in your prison in a turn. Should have been until end of battle. But uh, uh -oh. that is, if this is until end of battle, I actually like that. That's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, sets up your plays and also can be a potential to like way to defend. It almost feels bulwarky, you know, but just a bit better. Uh, heal. When played, if you've got a Zorga, choose a normal order <laughs> card in your hand or drop zone to play it. <laughs> what the fuck? No! Stop! Stop it! Bro, team, uh, team Daybreak gets all the stupid shit, bro. I yeah, swear they, to God. They really do, though, right? I, I, it's, it's funny you mentioned that. I didn't realize until you said it, though, but they really do. Uh, Okay, so do we even need to list all the orders that you can use this with? Uh, where is it? Like, the uh, whales? Uh, one, the one where you could, like but retire one of their things um but your opponent uh, chooses so i guess that's not that bad that's um, uh that's whale smelt but you do have uh regurgitation from the underworld uh which is selective retiring mm, that is true oh, 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 oh another one that you can do uh with this is you could do everyone's favorite cloud of miasma and zorga gets the 5000 continuous to the front row oh god that's another interesting one <laughs> or <laughs> or if you're on base, Zorka, uh, <laughs> grief, despair, and rejection. <laughs> yeah, because because Zorka doesn't specify during your turn, so you could actually alka magic during the opponent's turn. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, because I because that's how you get the five thousand is you alka magic. So if you and if you're on Zorga mask, the you know big Zorga, right? If you do two mm -hmm. cloud of miasmas with this. Um, that's 10,000 in the front row. And then you've achieved Alka Magic, which means you get another 10,000 in the front row. Oh, God. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay. I, I think I understand how you would break this. Therefore, please, don't let that happen. Um, you would have to, like, I think in order to make this seem a little bit fairer, uh, restrict Alka Magic. And, yeah, we might be good here. It, it'd still be one of the stronger ones, but then again, Zorga isn't a stranger to getting random, super solid, strong pieces of support. Uh, so Eugene, uh, Eugene. Ah, this oh, one's God, one of yours, please. Man. Uh, when played, if you got Eugene, be... retire one of your opponent's rear guards for every two of your rest units. If you could, oh retire, God, why? And he gets fifteen thousand power till end of turn. Why turn? Why stop? Why turn? Stop! Please, I don't even like the fact that it's the denial Griffin. No, I don't like that. <laughs> Crazy, please stop. 
I know Eugene players listen to me, fellow Eugene players. I know it seems dark right now. I know it seems like this is a world without light. But trust me when I see this, our uncrowned king will come back stronger than ever. Please hold on to the hope you have left. We do not need to resort to cowardice. We do not need to resort to dirty tactics like this. All we need to do is be ourselves and face our opponent straight on this is bullcrap <laughs> and pray for a new crossfight as good me. as the hex orb stand with me together UG players believe believe oh, okay uh oh hey hex orb speaking of her when played if you have a hexa choose a trigger unit in your drop zone and hand each and put them on top of your deck in a or fuck off Absolutely uh, fuck off right now. So, uh, I would fuck like to borrow my OT and then proceed to stack it on top of the next smile. <laughs> Guys, remember Demiurge? Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey um, man, this feels more impactful than Demiurge, and that's the sad part. <laughs> oh, God. Uh. <laughs> that, that's the sad thing. Flagburg. Ooh, hey, th this guy. Welcome to Flagburger, home of the Flagburger. So, if you've got a Flagberg Vanguard, if it's the third or less battle of the turn, wow, that's like, that's like wave but backwards, uh, choose one of your opponent's back row units and rest it. If it's the fourth battle of the turn, uh, or more, retire one of your rear guards to retire your opponent's attack. Why does it retire? That's not Why? That's weird. <clears throat> no. Stop making denial griffins. Why? Why are you doing this? Who hurt you? You think D series needs denial griffin? Nah, bro. We need more plussing. <laughs> you know what would be kind of neat is uh, uh, if it had like a there's some sort of wave restriction with it. I don't have the brain to say what, but if it had a def the nature of the defensive skill was it forced your opponent to column swap like mid battle, and you know obviously most decks are uh, that really doesn't mean... column swap. That's kind of neat. I guess if they're both standing regards, sure. Right, yeah. So, like, the booster and the boosty, like, before they get a chance to do the thing, it switches. Yep. <laughs> That'd be kind of neat. Uh, it's very specific, but then again, Aqua Force usually doesn't have the greatest G guards when it comes to, like, actual, like, convenient raw shield power. It's more just for the other stuff. You know, look at Yuanis, look at Gophelia, right? Uh, Boss Saga, ooh, huh? this is one of mine. Um, when played, if you've got a Bavs, if your opponent, I mean, if your Vanguard has two armed cards equipped, specifically both of them, choose a card from your drop zone and call it to an open rear circle. If you call Trick Moon, choose one of your opponent's rear guards and retire it. Uh, ooh, so that's Stop now it. Griffin. That's already done now, Griffin, yet we got more text somehow. <laughs> if you've got one or less armed cards equipped, retire one of your rears to choose an arm from your hand or drop and equip it to your Vanguard. Uh, that part actually doesn't feel very bad because a lot of your arm cards are more battle based uh, during your turn. So the only real arm card that would get a good exploit here would be the spear to draw a card because presumably you already have a shield. Funnily enough, this would actually be really nice if you play gun because with Chandra, it gets rid of itself and that's usually the arm where the shield would be placed. So now you're at one or less arms and then you can use this heal effect to, well, blitz order technically, to bring back the uh the swayambu to then shield at some point for the rest of the battle phase that is that's th true this um the now griffin feels a little cheap to be honest but the implication with the revival and putting back the armed cards actually feels pretty nice it feels in theme that's not a bad one i like this is one of the better ones all damn. right damn that's actually all of them <laughs> funnily enough uh, he might do other stuff, he said, or Gondiva, although, dude, don't, let's not do Gondiva. Um, I, I, I would shut All right, quick, uh, quick intermission here. Only Flutia as a G-Guard sucks. Everyone is, uh, everyone's all right. <laughs> yeah, like, they're just not, gonna, like, amazing, gonna say you know? No, they're pretty good. I like, uh, I like all of them. Well, so, well for yeah. raw shield value, the only one that I think I really like a lot, well, shield value plus being rather convenient would be Ice Barrier. I like Ice Barrier a lot. And also Iwanis, but mm -hmm. then again, Iwanis even is more for protecting your rear guards and telling the opponent, stay the hell away from my children. <laughs> you know. All right, I've had enough. Uh, anyway, so overall, uh, this concept is really nice. And I think, honestly, we are at a point <laughs> in standard where offensive power creep does necessitate some sort of new defensive mechanic the fight back 
uh, I, I do think we're kind of I guess, pushing uh, push there. And this might be it, except, you know, more balanced. I guess that's why they've been pushing the uh, the Blitz Orders thing lately with uh, DBT-11. Right, right. And the, the thing that, and I get, you know, they're like generic and they're helpful, but they also don't seem like they do enough because, and I'm Vanguard Insider pointed this out with the uh, the Spear one, that regardless piece, which is that a it's a one of meant to counter another one of. That's pretty, mm, that's pretty ooh for deck building consistency, right? You know, versus G guards, where G guards are always a constant, and you have, you're able to see four of them potentially in a game, if not more, depending on shenanigans. That, I suppose so. Yeah, like that, that was a lot more of a constant versus uh, the way standards approaching it right now, because they lack the G zone, which is just this permanent insured area. Uh, but still, like, some of these were actually really cool. The Meteor one felt, like, really tamed it. The, the fact that it's only two lines, like, it's one sentence, probably tells you it's not that bad. Uh, well, it's your <laughs> Zorga. It's uh, just another <laughs> Denial Griffin, bro. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? That's... Denial Griffin sounds lame and simple and dumb, but you know what? Lame, simple, and dumb is what Gravidio always was, so I think it's actually fitting. Oh god, no, it just means that it got dumber. <laughs> we mean, don't even. Isn't that what that's not much. Is? That's not much opportunity to kill Gravidia, is what I'm upset about. In my experience, right? Mm. And like, oh, you know, we have to go all out now. Uh, this is our only chance. And then they fucking retire your regard. What the fuck? Yeah, they go. <laughs> <laughs> that's so dumb. That's oh, so friends. unfair. Anyway, God, amazing concept, and I really wish Standard had something like these. Some of these were pretty, mm, mainly the ones that gave defensive to tell, end of turn. Uh, that's a big red flag, you know, big F you to what MLB stands for. I say this so much, the <laughs> fact that everything here wants to power creep MLB, but it's just that bad in Standard. Um, but yeah, I still think you were really on the right track here, and some of these are beautiful, beautiful ideas. All right, let's move on. Um, so... Yeah, BHL, uh, sealed blaze made in Reno Lily. Uh, ooh, interesting. Um, so it's a great one, uh, and that's interesting. So it's based on Bavs. Auto. When this unit is placed on field, <laughs> no else is someone right on field. Discard. It's got one. It's got one. And how many? It's got how many? <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Discard five cards from the top of my deck, please, sir. <laughs> Discard the opponent's vanguard. Uh, search for one card with the ability <laughs> crossover dress or armed card and shuffle your deck. You retrieved, <laughs> retrieved an arms card. Put this unit into soul and draw two. Woo. Damn. Woo. It's heavy. Okay. Uh, it's also considered prior dragon. Hmm. If Bav Sakura is uh, auto, if Bavs is on vanguard circle and the unit attacks period soul blast this card and counter blast two. restand the vanguard and drive minus one i hate this grammar so much this dude doesn't even this dude does does nothing he doesn't use the proper nomenclature and terminology he puts he, this period is out of ah, whatever i'm gonna stop you know being an ass about that uh i like the idea you know it basically no I, I like the idea here that oh hey you're tying kind of the two decks better uh together a little bit and i feel like we haven't seen enough of that ever since the trick moon trick star kind of stuff but uh -huh. restanding baths like this seems odd um <laughs> i mean soul blast Yay. a particular card in counter blast 2 actually does feel like a fitting cost but why is it on this random grade one to restand the vanguard that seems really bizarre Honestly, I don't even like the fact that, you know, like, it restands the Vanguard. Like, uh, can't we just stop with Eugene and that's it? Oh, God. Yeah, I mean, Baz needs something to keep up at this point, and this could have helped. I do. But it's on the wrong card, you know? I will admit that I think it's about time to give uh, buffs a new Vanguard of sorts. Because it mm. does feel like... uh. Like with all of the you know sealed blaze made in buff Sarga restriction, it does feel like uh, if they want to give her a new form, it has to be uh, you know a replacement grade three. Not that they will ever go back to grade fours, I don't think. Yeah, 
Um, I think it would just have to be an alternative grade three that's also considered to be Bob Saga, and then you'd like have that going for it. Um, and also, let's just consider the fact that when it comes to a mass deck, a mass deck feels very clunky and impractical for a deck that already runs a lot of grade three orders. Like, really? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we want to have that, you know? So, eh, probably not going to be a mask, at least not feasibly. So, I think you're right. It would end up being an alternative grade 3, and it probably has a restand effect, but, uh, you know, different costs and whatnot. Because if it does have the restand effect, it probably loses uh, the retiring. It might still have a recursion, but it probably loses the retires. And the front row retires <laughs> are pretty devastating, so it's a fair trade off. I, uh, personally, I think. I kind of want Buff Sargrat to call mid battle phase, you know, <laughs> like on attack, discard and call something uh, mid battle phase, so that Shabda can CB one and call itself. Ah, <laughs> you know, what'd be kind of funny is if we had like this uh, return to the Erger Athos and had a multi attack involving Trick Moon of all things. That'd be hilarious. Oh god. <laughs> oh no, that's hilarious. Uh, overall, <laughs> neat concept, but um, terrible grammar, and also I just think that it's a little bit overpowered for uh, Mirror Grade One. Um, it does too much, you know. It's already kind. It already gives you too much draw power, and then it gives you this restand, which is also an another plus. Uh, how about an upgraded prison card? Ooh, okay, cool. So oh, we God. we have something to look for other than Galactalis. Why not? Um, Galaxy Max Prison, Black Hole. Uh, dude, I guess people just go in the black hole and somehow don't die from the gravitational forces compressing them and, you know, erasing their existence. All right. That's a great Probably. taste of order. <laughs> um, costs. Counterblast 2. Must send uh, Galactalis from the order zone to drop zone. Must have a Vanguard with pure lightning. Oh my! So, not only are we doubling down on needing the Grade 4 specifically, so F you to any potential Seraph mass, um, you also have to get rid of Galactalis. So we have a little bit of the Wellstrip idea where you're upgrading the thing in the Order Zone. That's cool, and it's also Counter Blast too. So, uh, Continuous Order Zone, <laughs> I like how he spells out Continuous. Uh, cards in Prison in the Order Zone count as two cards. Mm. Okay. When your opponent can Normal Call or Rear Guard, they perform the following. Soul Blast 1, choose two of their imprisoned cards and call them to rear circle. Counter Blast 1, choose three of their imprisoned cards and call them to rear circle. Ah, Whoa. so they can call out more things, but the upside is that but. while you hold them, it's easier to get up to 10 plus, which which directly helps Pure Light. That's actually not so. Bad. That's kind of creative. You, yeah. wow. I've, this is the first time I've seen someone willing to do that <laughs> yeah they it's like the the twee and law between the opponent and yourself in the prison matchup right where it's the give and the take you just amplified it on both sides that's perfect and it even has counter blast 2 which counter blast 2 is kind of hefty but not an unreasonable cost because you don't use a lot of cb other than maybe for chevalstead mostly in prison so you can afford it but it still counts for something I like that. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's honestly no complaints. That's this, that's sorry. pretty re reasonable, sir or miss. Um, uh, silver sir. death zero. Honestly, yeah, perfect card. This this kicks ass. Uh, if we if we, <laughs> I'm not sure. I forget if we've already hit something like this earlier, or if we're gonna hit something down below. But there's another spontaneous one-off piece of support for a D standard deck. I am really tempted to just play this and see how it affects prism and then you would just you or someone else would take the other one-off thing for the deck and then we just test that because this deserves to be on screen i love this <laughs> um i don't think i'm gonna do the custom card battles bro the all right pain. Uh, uh well all right if that's the case i'll i'll take someone who isn't a bubble blowing baby uh okay Nathan you do that you do that i am too much of a baby to do that it's <laughs> okay though <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, Nathan Clarence Hearn, uh, this guy again. We've 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 had ye old Hearn for uh, a few of these, I think. I was conflicted between making this a Brankate deck, but at this point we need an Angel Ride Line. Ah, so oh, God. take two on Angel Ride Line. Will this be better or worse? We're about to find out. So Primordial Watcher, Seracule. Uh, oh. definitely an improvement on the name. 
Bro, they're gonna. Oh no, we're gonna need to soul blast tree every time she needs to attack. Ooh. Hold them out. <laughs> Act van circle soul blast two. Hey, you're actually close. And discard a card from your hand. <laughs> Put a card from your damage zone into your hand. Then deal your vanguard one damage. Ah, rescue check. Uh, if your divine cathedral has this. countdown five or more. Whoa. Oh. Uh, it reduces abilities discard costs by one. If your Divine Cathedral has countdown seven or more, you reduce the Soul Blast cost by one. So then it becomes just Soul Blast one to Rescue Check one. If you've built out more. Okay. Okay, okay. Considering the overall payoff is the one Rescue Check so far, that's okay. And that's actually interesting. Although the fact that the Angel Ride line is predicated around this thing called the Divine Cathedral, I mean. I don't know about you, but last time I checked, Sanctuary in the Sky is not really nice to be tied to fairies. I kind of liked my fairies without needing Sanctuary in the Sky, but no. Then they force Sanctuary in the Sky to be needed. It's like, okay, I guess. Uh, okay, anyway, enough Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay. What's up? <laughs> oh, it was a Yu-Gi-Oh reference? Yes, okay, I was just about to say, I don't understand what the fuck you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, auto van circle. When it attacks, if your opponent's vanguard is greater or greater, good. Uh, counter blast two. Choose three of your front row units. Whoa. They get 2,000 power until end of turn for each countdown your divine cathedral. Ooh. Then activate Ooh. one of the effects below until end of the next turn. When your vanguard is hit and your opponent's damage zone has four or less cards, choose one of your opponent's vanguards and deal with damage. Okay. Okay, that's a funky way, but CB2 for that kind of ping is actually not that bad. Or uh, choose one card from your damage zone and heal it. Um, huh. Now, <clears throat> that's actually interesting because I was just starting to get a little bit of Malkuth vibes from this. And so the CB2 and then healing uh, when the opponent's greater or greater, that's actually a lot like Malkuth. Now, there's uh, there's less power going on here compared to Malkuth, which is good. That's what keeps us a D standard deck rather than a V series deck. Um, but there's still some amount of power, and you do have the opposite end. This is definitely Malkuth in inspired. I will not hear anything otherwise. It's got it all there. I... The soul blast. Uh, sorry, go on. Don't What's you up? think that... Don't you think that the then activate one of the effects below kind of... I don't know. I feel like a condition is missing from that. It just says, then activate one of the effects below. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. That maybe, feels a bit strange to me. Maybe it, maybe it was something like this. Like, if in front of this effect, the heal effect, you put, if you have four or more cards in your damage zone, right? So now it's like, if the opponent's low on damage, you can ping. If you're high on damage, you get the option to heal. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, cyclical aspect to it, right? Um, maybe right. that's the thing that's missing, but even then, it's still pretty... This thing this thing rules. So far, so good. Although, uh, this hasn't been the first time that we've seen a promising Vanguard get absolutely destroyed by its supporting cards. I hope this Divine Cathedral doesn't do too much, right? Because um, if mm -hmm. it doesn't, then this seems pretty good. Anyway, watch your Godriel. It's a grade 2. Uh, it's a van effect. When it's written over by Seracule, uh, reveal the top card of your deck. Activate all the effects below depending on that card's type. If it's a normal unit, you can call it your rear circle. If it's a trigger unit, choose a card from your drop and return to your hand. If it's an order, draw a card. So, these are huh. all different kind of pluses. Um, that's pretty cool. That's neat. I actually um, don't mind that. Yeah, that's cool. Because I, will, Go on. I will point out real quick that um, the, the third effect, the order one, yeah, so um, you have to order, uh, draw the card you reveal, so you just put that order in your hand. <laughs> That's and that I think he might even be an intention. He might have done that intentionally because orders only really matter in the hand. So yeah, that's mm. that's cool. Uh, and uh, what I like about this is that even though it is an angels inspired deck, this feels like it's more Keter, and that it is a Keter deck. So there you go. Oh, it has a rear effect as well if you want to play rear guards to this, which is if you healed a card from your damage on this turn, it gets five thousand power. Damn, that does feel D series. That's not bad. Uh, <laughs> okay, watch your Armoros. So, when placed on Van, you Soul Blast 1, okay, search for Divine Cathedral, reveal it, add to the hand, shove your deck, ah, okay. Um, so, oh. you, you add a cost for the Cathedral, which is fine, because Soul Blast is a relevant cost for the deck, alright. Uh, act Rear Circle, if you have an Angel Vanguard, <laughs> a really nice trait, I appreciate the trait a lot more than Snail. Uh, put this card in your soul, choose a card for your damage zone, add it to your hand, put the top card of your deck into the damage zone face down. <gasps> oh! Good. Oh, good. That's beautiful. Amazing. Oh, my man understands. Mm. My man understands. Oh. Oh. 
God, dude, this is so oh. good so far. Okay, okay. Oh, oh man, oh, if, this, if this continues to be like good, uh, you get the honors of playing this if you actually do come around. Um, <laughs> Divine Cathedral, set order grade one. Okay, so you can play this immediately okay. after searching. Oh God. Uh, please don't fuck it. Please don't fuck this. Countdown. Up. At the end of each turn, increase this card's countdown by one. Okay, okay fair. So if you're grade one, then. Uh, let's say um, that the let's say that the opponent went first. So one, opponent goes to grade two. Two, three, four, five. Your countdown five. If you go, uh, your countdown five for the time you're grade three. So if you're five or more, you can re reduce the discard costs, but the soul blast cost yeah. is regardless of who went first or second. Um, okay, so you'll be soul blasting two regardless. Hmm. Uh, interesting. If your Vanguard has Watcher in its name, okay, so it works for your Rideline cards, and you have no other cards named Divine Cathedral in your Order Zone, play one of this. <laughs> Feel your Vanguard really one damage to play this card. Hmm. Okay. Continuous in the Order Zone. You cannot ride cards without Watcher and their card names. Yeah. Fair. Watcher locked. Okay, Fair. That's fine. Auto in the order zone. When a card is removed from or put into the damage zone, if your Vanguard is grade three or greater, put a card from your drop into your soul. Increase this card's countdown by one. So it countdown. So the countdown can be accelerated, and it also builds soul at the same time. So it helps with the cost. Okay, that's fine. It it basically helps perpetuate itself. In the order zone, at the end of each turn, if this card's countdown is nine or greater, you can counterblast one and put a card from your rear circle or hand into your drop. Your opponent can put four cards from their rear circle and hand in total into their drop, but they don't deal one damage to your opponent's vanguard. Whoa. Ooh. That's a, that's a trippy countdown. One thing that would be cool. Wait, what's that last kill? Uh, Hold on, what's the last kill? Order circle, when, this, when this card breaches countdown nine, shuffle your drop into the deck. Whoa. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> Whoa. Bro, I don't know about that one, but uh, continue your thought about the third skill, please. Okay, <laughs> the so the skill. third skill, the thing about the third skill is this is really cool. There's one problem with it. Because it says at the end of each turn and it doesn't get rid of your countdown markers, at each turn, you can literally see, you can literally pay the cost and threaten to ping the opponent a damage. Um, and this mm. isn't on the four or less thing. So there's two ways to balance that, right? You can either balance it by getting by wiping out your markers afterwards because you're accelerating. That's cool. So this this would make this more lethal because you keep the ability to kill them if they're at five. Alternatively, you can have this still be the case, but the damage ping only applies if that if they're at four or less, so that you can't threaten to kill each end phase of each player. Um, one of those two. Honestly, honestly, forcing them to get rid of four cards total is is already good enough. I would just say stick with that. So, in other words, yeah, like I think this is. I, I think I kind of agree with you too. And if that's the direction to go, which it seems like the better direction to go, reduce the counters afterwards, right? Reduce the counters, yeah. and that's cool. Uh, especially since you can essentially get uh, like two counters a turn depending on how this effect pans out which is a cool effect because it also builds up soul um and i also like that it's a once per turn so you can't just keep doing that crap so that's properly balanced mm -hmm. the shuffle you're dropping to the deck i do like that as well um that makes it that's that's very conducive of a grindy game state and when you're doing little rescue checky stuff you can build out your deck quicker and if you're doing ketter stuff you can also mill your deck quicker so yeah um Although, is it just mm. me, or does this feel a little extraneous compared to everything else? Okay, yeah, I was I was about to say, uh, I honestly don't think that should be there. <laughs> yeah. I think that, it, I think it just says, oh, when this card reaches countdown 9, reduce it to 4. <laughs> when card reduces, oh, oh yeah, reaches countdown 9 uh, at the, <laughs> you just, yeah, you reduce it to 4, so now you have to get back to 5. Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. That also works. Uh that feels very measured as well because if you are able to get two a turn potentially that means it takes three more end phases until you can start threatening this uh th that's mm -hmm. a perfect number even i'm not sure if you thought that one out if you just happen to think it up by the way a uh, good one there naps um thank you yeah uh but still, or what's up? i guess uh i guess a better way to do it is get rid of the last skill and then the first one 
uh, if this card's come down is 9 or greater, you CB1 and you'll pay all the costs. Uh, force them to get rid of 4 and then you reduce your counter to 4. Mm, okay, and don't even have the damage ping? <laughs> don't even have the damage ping. I think forcing them to remove 4 is already like a super good freaking effect, especially in uh, a format like D. Yeah, that is true. So, like, it, you can see where we're going with it. I'm, a lot of the people whose cars reviews, they come over and stop by, review our review, as it were, and comment on it. So, I'm hoping you do the same, because this is genuinely one of the best cars we've seen so far. I really love the idea of this ride line. So, we've kind of Dude. laid out several avenues to improve this. You know, pick one. I, I am absolutely in love with this. <laughs> I've never said this before about anyone else's custom cards. But you've made my heart drop. <laughs> this is crazy, bro. This is great. I like this is this. a first for me. <laughs> this is a first for me. I like this so, so much. <laughs> That's nice. All right, there's a couple more cards. Uh, let's see what's up. Starlight Angel. It's a rear guard grade two. When it's placed on rear circle during your main phase, mm, all right, cool. No multi detection against with it. If you have an Angel Vanguard, yeah. you counter blast one and choose a mm -hmm. card from your damage zone to call it to rear circle and put the top card of your deck into your damage zone face down. Oh, good face down. Good, 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 good. Oh, not bad at all. Yes. Hope song. Yes. Trainer. So, uh, don't think it's lost on. Well, it's definitely not lost to me that he used the uh, the Hope song and Hope Starlight so. for uh, the alt mile stuff. That's kind of neat. Um, it's a little bit out of place here, but I also like it at the same time. Because, like, yeah, they are angels, aren't they? Uh, auto on rear circle. At the end of the battle that this unit attacked, you counterblast one and activate all the effects below depending on your cathedral's countdown. If it's five or more, okay. choose a card from your damage zone, add it to your hand, and choose a card from your drop and put in your damage zone face down. Okay. For all CB, right. it's a selective add. Uh, eight or more, choose one of your rear guards and it gets critical plus one until end of turn. Whoa. Yeah. That's still, oh. that's good. That's good fair pressure for a rear guard grade three. Whoa! Yeah. Oh, and a little bit low. Put in my ass. <laughs> Wait, what's I just oh. gotta see. Yeah. Put in my that's ass. Uh, wild <laughs> hedgehog. Why does the cathedral have to be a set order? Shouldn't it be a crest instead? Ah, I don't know. I think a set order is fine. Nah. I think set order. Is nah. Fine. Um, deal one damage to your <laughs> opponent's vanguard when the card reaches countdown. Not I can't believe I forgot to mention, but the countdown is supposed to trigger every. Uh, turn once the card is set. Uh, the auto skill is supposed to accelerate once you hit grade three, but ideally you're informing your ride your grade three. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so he was just kind of specifying something we basically already accounted for. But Nathan, my God, are these beautiful? Oh my God, they're so cool. I I need to play. One of us needs to play these. Like even if it's not you or me, the hell. This is. Th this is fantastic. Put it in my ass. Amazing. I want you, I want you to put it all in my ass. I give you my consent. <laughs> I give you my consent. A salty surprise. <laughs> I consent, bro. Put it in my ass. Oh God. Trey <laughs> Manifique. Well done, mate. All right, wiki numbers. Nice, uh, nice avatar name. <laughs> it's stranger. Uh, <laughs> hey, look. It's a. Uh, they actually, we actually have real Bermuda cards, and they chose the Shizuku right line. All right, fine. Uh, um, <laughs> there's a there is one problem with that. She's Shizuku's kind of fucking dead. <laughs> it's an encounter card. <laughs> it's an encounter uh, yeah. lyrical. Let's go. Uh, so <laughs> it's a Bermuda lyrical. Yeah. Uh, this so D starter, <clears throat> which I'm gonna assume he means D starter skill, obviously. But continuous, this card is also regarded as Bermuda Triangle Cadet Shizuku. Ah, I I'm did there. not sure. I'm not sure how necessary that is. Yeah, uh, you could have just called it Bermuda, Bermuda Triangle Cadet Shizuku and just be done with it, you know? Uh, that's all you need to do. Uh, obviously, D is no stranger to reusing card names. Um, Mermaid Idol Sedna, D. That's a... Uh, now? Okay, wait. That's a G Hold on. So, they use... <laughs> they reuse uh, Sedna's name, but not Shizuku's? What? Why? <laughs> 
Obviously, if you're doing this, it's an encounter ride line. So why even bother? I mean, I guess he's only doing because he wants it to be lyrical monasterio cadet. But the problem is that she's dead. She can't be a lyrical monasterio cadet. What <laughs> 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 do Bermuda units live forever? Is this how we get around uh, calling the police on Bermuda mains because you know they like children because they're not children apparently? They hey yo, hold on, hold on, hold on. Chill, 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 yeah, chill, yeah, chill, chill with that. We, I'll chill. we don't want to flame. We don't want to play Bermuda Triangle player style, hey. especially when we're both one of them. We're both one of them, bro. Yeah, hey, don't I, do I this. I like Loris, bro. I like Loris. I will admit, I'm, I'm a Loris goon, so I, I'm not even gonna flame him. I just, I just saw the line of play for a joke, and being Mister you Yo, do that, man, do that. I'm do that, not, bro. To not shut my mouth up. Anyway, so said note, what's their skill? When it's placed on Advanced Circle or rode upon by a Bermuda Triangle, look at top five cards of the deck. Reveal up to one Grade Three normal unit from among them. Shuffle the rest your deck and put it in into your hand or top of the deck if you put it in the hand discard one card if you did not reveal any cards look at the top card of the deck huh, neat what? Uh, uh, this last on, let me part reread i that. don't get why but let, everything else seems nice sir. let me let me reread that hold on oh. shuffle okay let's go on if you're to go look at it um, that's weird <laughs> Weird. Uh, okay. Um, maybe we'll get it later. Um, continue this rear. During this turn, if your grade 3 Vanguard was placed, or your drive check revealed a grade 3, this unit's original power becomes 10,000, its original critical becomes 2? Okay. No. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say it right now. No. The, the crit is 2 bad. easy because it's costless, but, the, but it becoming 10,000 is not a bad idea. <laughs> It's just interesting. Yeah. Placed on grade three. Um, top, uh, like, like I, mm. as we saw with the other thing that got a crit, like, kind of for whatever, right? Uh, not Nathan's. Nathan's is perfect. But the other one that got it for no reason, because Nathan's Whoa. actually had a purpose, right? Um, crits Nathan should made come me with super cost. Honey. Yeah, because crits are impactful. They shouldn't just be thrown out willy-nilly. Power <laughs> is one thing if it's not too much, but crits need to be tied to something, honestly. Uh, top Even lyrical. Yeah. Even current lyrical cards don't do this, my guy. <laughs> I mean, look at early D. You could CB2 for a crit. Straight up. <laughs> uh, so, top idol Aqua. Why is this thing back? Uh, when when placed on, on Van Circle or Road Upon by a Bermuda. Oh, so same stipulation. Return one of your rear guards to your. Oh, wait, that means this effect activates twice. Crazy. Um, oh, God. When, uh, return one of your rear guards to your hand and draw a card. If you drew, reveal one card in your hand. And if it is a grade three, put that card on the top of the deck. If it isn't, discard it. Okay. Okay. That I don't was, know. That was almost wicked. But it's interesting. So it cycles twice. This actually doesn't give you any advantage. But we seem to be really concerned about grade threes. I I don't remember that being uh, Shizuku's thing to, like, focus on grade threes. I mean, I guess there was the Maybe Shrider Shizuku, right? It might, it might have to do with the fact that the main grade three is uh, Reindeer. Wait, what? <laughs> oh my god, it's Reindeer. Okay, never mind. Yeah, she is grade three, babe. Well, you know what? We, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in just a moment. Um, okay, so, uh, continuous during this turn, if your grade three van was placed, or your drive truck revealed a grade three, so same stipulation as with Setna, this unit becomes 13,000 power and critical plus two. Again, the 13,000 power, I get it, and it's cool. The critical doesn't need to be chill um, for free. Mm -hmm. Okay, so reindeer. This I is need the, you to the, chill. <laughs> this is the head honcho. <laughs> Velvet voice reindeer. Interesting pick for a D-series retrain. Would not have thought that. I would have thought it would have been something like Pacifica. Um, Same. On, auto on van circle and per turn. Uh, no, and per turn oh, is short shit. for ability <laughs> name per turn. Hi, buddy. Fight new restriction icon. Uh, use oh, your invisible hard ones per turn. So it's a hard, it's a it's a hard ones per turn, I guess. Um, at the end of the battle, this unit attack. You counterblast one and discard one. Ride a grade three or greater normal unit from your hand to stand, and its drive becomes one. Okay. Okay. Um, so even if, even if it's a if it's grade four, um, at the end of the turn return that unit to your hand and ride a reindeer for your soul's rest Oof. uh auto van or rear when your drive check revealed a grade three perform all the following effects in order all of them uh if this unit is on van circle all that car to an open rear circle uh right. okay during during the units in your front right. row gets power of 3k and if this unit is on your front row rear circle 
it gets critical plus one. Plus, that. Hmm, we talked about this wiki numbers. Naughty, naughty, naughty. Okay, a, a couple of things here, right? I don't mind that second skill. That's uh, that's a pretty neat um, callback to the to the original reindeer, right? Because uh, the V one, oh, Highlander shit. <laughs> He's doing what they try to do with Strider Olivia for some weird reason. <laughs> but, but, uh, mm, yeah, I don't know. Uh, how many of your thoughts here? Let's see. So, I'm going to appeal to my raging form dragon sensibilities looking at this because you have a lot of the, of like, essence with it. CB and discard to ride a great through greater normal and it drives becomes one is good in terms of card economy that feels fair um especially for something like bermuda and this is bermuda the thing about it is returning it back to the hand to ride a reindeer from the soul's rest that feels that does that feels too easy um because you mm -hmm. just have the perpetual setup from that point onwards you should work to maintain that setup we've seen it with every other ride grade three vanguard during battle phase kind of thing you know it doesn't matter what the format is you could go with the original you can go to v series the full bronto and raging form or the original raging form even without you had to work for that you can go to youth Burke in standard as well you don't all you, you shouldn't be able to perpetuate that you it's kind of your onus as the player of the deck to make sure that you can maintain that function just by digging um however the second effect here is where i and like aside from that this is good by the way but the second effect is where it gets interesting because since it's a once per turn and it's based on banner rear it's not an and once per turn like this guy did here he distinctly put it here but not here that means that if you were to drive check and call this guy call this girl rather then you get to have its effect active because if you then drive check another grade three, well, its effect is going to be live and you can get power and crit and stuff. So it compounds on each other and that can get pretty neat, but it can also get out of hand if you happen to have a front row of reindeers and having a front row of reindeers might not even be that big of a deal because you can maintain reindeers because you just ride it and then you just bounce it back. That feels pretty. That feels kind of off. So you, uh, mm. mm -hmm. yeah. I, I oh, would well. say I would say the concepts are there, and it is cool in how it interacts, but it's too easy. It needs to be hard. A bit too, a bit too V for my taste, honestly. Yeah, right. V made things easy, and that's not a good thing. If you've played the original Reindeer, uh, well, when I say the original, I mean like the G series one, and obviously this is taking more after what like G series was going for. Uh, that wasn't easy to set up. You need to have pieces rolling to keep the system going, and it also wasn't like some super big blowout thing. And this isn't either, but it just it, it's a little too light and free for what it is. Uh, so I I would say you gotta improve on that aspect, but the concept is there. Um, this person mm -hmm. has some stuff. Uh, for the, um, just a, all because of silly 10,000 character limit. I replied to my own comment four times. That'll show someone. <laughs> this guy again. Um, <laughs> yes, you read that right. Or at all. Four times. Some above me may have claimed they brought a lot, but you know those people have restraint and flavor text initially. Been risk including flavor text if you're hitting the semi transparent limited characters. Other 80 ish cards. Accounting D series. Uh, wait, what? Oh, God. The, these aren't cards, right? They're just corrections, right? No, these are, these are cards. Oh, God. <laughs> these are cards <laughs> i understand why Think. the post is so long now. um it's this guy we might need to we might need to uh reserve that for an episode of its own actually yeah he <laughs> he is in fact an episode of his own and you know what I think this might be a good time to end it then. I'm not sure if this is a, above or below an hour. Either way, it feels like a fitting set point. Hedgehog, my boy, has been commenting on a lot of other ideas throughout. I think he deserves to have his own dedicated video like Nab said. So we're going to get to that next time. However, 
this was a fantastic episode. I like a lot of what we saw here. Uh, especially Nathan. the angel ride line. And uh, also the order. Nathan! Nathan Daisuke! Kekodos! Marry me! Nathan! Marry me, please! Marry me now. Marry me now. <laughs> yeah, obviously we know what our highlight is here. Uh, so, if you did like this video, then go ahead and check out the previous iterations for the season down the playlist that I'll have at the end of this video. Furthermore, I've got lots of other Vanguard content that you can check out when you click at my channel. We've got top tens, tier lists, fight nights, the whole shebang. So check it out. And if you like what you see, consider leaving a subscribe and turn on that notification bell for the next time I upload a video. And with that, take care. God bless. See you next time.